Howdy folks, Nathan here with the Fast Lane Car, and what you're seeing behind me is a very special vehicle for Infiniti because it's one of their best selling ones, and now it's pretty much all new. I'm talking about the 2022 Infiniti QX60. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what makes it unique because bear in mind, what you're looking at is a vehicle that is very similar to its cousin, the Nissan Pathfinder, but they have some big differences between them. So let's get started. First of all, reason why this vehicle is so important for Infiniti is because of who it competes against. Starting all the way up from Cadillac and the XT6, BMW, of course, their X5, Audi Q7, Mercedes-Benz, GLE. But the ones that it really competes with in my book is the Lexus RX L, because that has this little third row, and the Acura MDX. In my opinion, the MDX is still one of the best in class for an overall vehicle, but now this new Infiniti is definitely creeping into that territory, primarily because it has an all new interior design, a very nice refreshed exterior design, and it also ditches the old continuously variable transmission, the CVT, for a brand new ZF 9HP 9 speed automatic transmission. That's really big news. Let's talk about a few things that makes this vehicle different than the Nissan Pathfinder. Now remember, we just got the Nissan Pathfinder. It's all new, well, pretty much all new. Still is technically riding on the old platform, but that platform is the R53 version of the Nissan D platform. And it, there have been so many changes that I consider it pretty much a new vehicle. The same goes for this one. So this is the L51 version of the QX60. So. What makes it different? Well, let's begin with the engine. This has the VQ 35DD, it's a 3.5 liter V6. And the Nissan Pathfinder actually has a slightly different designation on their engine. It's the VQ 35DE, <laughs> I know, confusing, right? So the big difference here is output because this engine, the one that's in the Infiniti is notably more powerful, more torquey. It puts out, 295 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. Now, if you compare it to the Nissan Pathfinder, once again, they're very similar in terms of components. The Pathfinder puts out 284 horsepower, 259 pound-feet of torque. So, significant difference between the two of them in terms of power. Now, if you compare the two vehicles in terms of their overall size, ground clearance, which is around six inches, stuff like that, they're very, very close because, once again, cousins. But there are other differences, and a lot of that has to do with the interior design, which we will get to in a minute. So there are two different QX60s that you choose from to begin with. There's the QX60 with front-wheel drive and the QX60 with all-wheel drive. We don't know what the pricing is going to be. However, we're going to find out about all of that, including MPG, in late 2021, according to Infinity. Let's continue, because this is a three-row crossover which means that it has room for up to seven people. It does have, there's a lot of standard equipment. Um, total passenger volume, by the way, is 140.6 cubic feet. Now that is quite a bit. That is with all the seats folded, except for the driver and front passenger. This vehicle has Pro Pilot Assist. Now that is part of an option package, so is traffic sign recognition and smart rear view mirror. Um, it also has this haptic control panel, which means that it actually provides feedback when you're touching it. Now that is standard. Also, there's an optional Infinity 12.3 inch dynamic meter display, pretty big, and a 10.8 inch head up display. That is huge for heads up display. Power liftgate, standard, motion activated, Hands-free power rear liftgate, not standard. 20-inch machine-finished alloy wheels, and believe that's what we're looking at on this image behind me. Quite nice looking, but they don't appear to be standard. And then if you get the Autograph, which is their very top-of-the-line vehicle, you get the black contrast roof. So what you're looking at behind me is that vehicle. If you look very carefully, you can see the pillar going up and over is actually black. 
and that contrast. It's something that a lot of people are starting to do, either make like just part of the roof black or the whole roof black and sort of make a two-tone. And it works on certain vehicles and it doesn't work on others. On this one, I really do think it works because if you look at the rear, or sorry, the side view mirror, you can see that it actually has the two-tone going on as well. It's actually pretty clever. So you can see the regular body color, and then on top of that, you have the black just like the roof. So it complements the roof's design. I think that's fantastic. Another thing I really do like is the overall interior design of this vehicle. It is spectacular. We are talking about beautiful looking stitching, the overall use of leather and the design of it is way better than their current models, which are quite good. So it's definitely a step in the right direction. Another thing is that their infotainment system looks like it's been significantly updated. One thing that Infinity has been trailing the competition with, with their current vehicles, has been their infotainment display systems and overall sound systems. I know that sounds strange because it's pretty damn good, but it could be better. Now it is. One example I will give you is that there is the availability of a 17 speaker stereo system. Now, why is that significant? Well, because the best you can get on the Nissan Pathfinder is 13. So that extra money goes into four more speakers, plus more power and more torque and more luxury, stuff like that. The interior design looks similar to the Nissan in terms of where the components are laid out. If you were to put them side by side, you would see, oh, okay, that's pretty much where these things go. And that's not such a bad thing because it's a logical setup, one that both Roman and I think is fantastic in that vehicle. So having that available in the QX60, that's huge. All right, let's continue with a few other things. Um, you will have uh, standard Infinity Touch 12.3 inch interactive display touchscreen 12.3 inches is good. I think the new standard is about 12 inches. I know that sounds silly, but I think that most vehicles are trying to have that as their maximum. So 12.3 is quite good. Um, wireless Apple CarPlay compatible, that is standard. USB based Android Auto, standard. Wi Fi hotspot, thank goodness, that is standard and wireless charging, which is not standard. Let's move on. Um, Eight-way power adjustable heated front seats, that's standard. Uh, I talked about that second row captain's chairs. Now, it's exclusive on the autograph one, so those two row captain chairs are, look like everything is covered in leather. And then on top of that, you have the stitching and piping, which is specific for, once again, the autograph one, so you get the really nice looking interior similar to the one you're looking at right now. Also, there's a massage function for the driver and front passenger. That is not standard, but I wish it were. Uh, climate control for the front seats, heated second row seats. Well, there you have it, folks. We unfortunately do not have MPG numbers that are confirmed. We also do not have pricing. However, I did mention, of course, that it has the nine-speed automatic transmission. That's an all-new ZF transmission. That transmission, by the way, is standard, so there are no other ones. So even if you get the base model, front wheel drive model, you'll still get that transmission. One final thing to note, this vehicle, just like the Nissan Pathfinder, will be built in Tennessee, and we will have many more details available for it in late 2021. That is according to Infinity. Thank you for, so much for joining me. This is Nathan for the Fastlane Car. Sorry for stumbling through this, but I think we got it all out there. I'll see you guys next time.